Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you a little bit about Bumblebee status on i3 Window Manager. A few days ago, I did a video about how to rice i3, and in that video, I installed Bumblebee status and used it for the first time. Since then, I've done a little bit of research on it, and I've decided to do a video going a little bit more in depth on what Bumblebee status is, how to use it, and so on and so forth. Really, when you're rising i3, one of the hardest things to do is decide what bar you're going to use. Now, it com i3 comes with its own bar called i3 bar, and there are tons of options out there. i3 status is an option, i3 blocks is an option, poly bar is an option, lemon bar is an option, you just so on and so forth. It goes on and on and on. There's just so many different choices. And each one of them is written in a different language. Each one of them has slightly different ways of configuring it. Some of them have, you make you put more effort into getting to run on multiple monitors. Some of them, you know, won't run on multi monitors at all. Some of them have our ability to, you know, some of them can be interacted with the, with a mouse in better, you know, in easier ways. The point is there's just a ton of choice. One of the things that I enjoy about Bumblebee status is that there's a ton of stuff that's pre-configured and it's all done right from your i3 config file. So there's no dealing with extraneous configuration files unless you're going to start getting into developing your own themes and stuff like that, which I'll talk a little bit about, but mostly I'm going to be dealing today with the stuff that's pre-configured. So if we jump over to the GitHub page, this is the GitHub page here. And it is written in Python. So if you're going to get into the nitty gritty d details of, you know, developing your own themes or doing your own modules or whatever, you have to do a little bit of Python work probably. But for the most part, if you're just going to use it, which as you can see up here, I'm actually using Mumblebee status right now as my bar in i3. You really don't need to know Python or anything because it's just within your i3 config file. Which actually, we can sh I can just show you my i3 config file if I can get to the right workspace. And we'll just zoom in here. Go to cd.config i3, and then what we can do is vim into config, and then just go down here at the bottom, and we'll see what the configuration for bumblebee status actually looks like so status command is an i3 command within and then it's just the path to your bumblebee status thing uh, then the modules you want which is are these things here uh, then it has an option for you to give a certain parameters for those modules that you've used so in this case there's supposed to be a time module here which is right here for um uh, I have these in really a really weird order. I mean, I just noticed that right now that the, usually I have the time as the last thing instead of for here I have the volume for whatever it is and that as the last thing, but it doesn't matter. Uh, but these f parameters or whatever allow you to set certain rules for whatever module you've selected. So in this case, it says the time format, and then the last thing is it shows allows you to choose a theme. Very very simple. All that stuff is uh, explained to you on their GitHub page. It gives you an example usage, which is pretty much, you know, you know how I figured out how to use them. It's just copied and pasted. Um, I did go about it the hard way, and it shows you how to install it. Now, what I did here is, uh, actually, we can just zoom in, zoom in here and cd into not config i3. Oops. Try again. <laughs> All right, and just do an ls here. And you can see I did a Bumblebee status. And basically that was just doing git clone Bumblebee status. That This uh, thing here. Now this is specifically for Arch Linux. Because it's basically building using the make package thing for Arch Linux. But there is an easier a way to do this on other distributions as well. You can clone it from git and make it directly. You can use pip. I believe it's also probably in the AUR. Now, I would not recommend actually doing this directly from the AUR because it installs it, that stuff in a weird place. You, because you're going to need to find the, like, uh, like I did here in the uh, config file. You have to be able to find where the binary of Bumblebee status is in order for it to run. Because basically, this is just a script telling i3 to run this every time i3 you know starts. All that being said, it's very easy to set up. So you just put this in your i3 config file and it would generate this. Now, there are tons of pre-made themes. First of all, we'll talk about first we'll talk about the themes. 
this is these are all the pre-made themes. Now I'm just using Solarize, but I could let's change the theme. Let's change it to Powerline. Now I should note that you're really um, you most of these require you to have some kind of font that enables uh, these little graphics and stuff. Probably Font Awesome is the one that you're going to want to use. I think you could probably change it so that Nerd Font would work. They have the similar uh, glyphs and stuff that, you, that they use, um, but you will have to have those installed. That's one of the dependencies. So I'm just going to copy this and go back over to my configuration file and change this word here. Down here and change dollar sign and control V and write this and we'll start and see as you can see I changed the theme that's how easy it is to theme. now if you were to do this on polybar just for example polybar is awesome I mean it's also written in Python I believe it has a great configuration file and you can just go through and change it and theme it to all you know your heart's content but you have to you'd have to go through to do the same thing to change each of these colors module by mo module and it would be it would take you you know a half an hour an hour or something in order to go through and actually do this whereas i just go through and you know use one of the pre-made themes now obviously you can use a pre-made theme on polybar as well but it's harder because a lot of times those pre-made themes use different fonts than what you might have installed in your system they might have certain dependencies or something they might use different modules whatever it's harder this was obviously as you can tell it was very very easy now i mean i'm just going to do it again just to show really so you got to remember these are all uh, mostly the same these pre-made ones all look quite similar let's just choose another one here this doesn't really matter which one i choose like i said they're all pretty similar i wish one i i, I Mostly what changes here is the colors, but let's just actually just choose uh, this one here. And we'll just change word here and W and control R and we've changed the theme again. That's really all there is to it. Now, you can also go through and obviously add different modules. So if we go here and go up here to the list of modules, these are a list of the modules that are available. CPU, and it gives you also a list of the parameters that you can use. Date, date time, debug, disk, st bumblebee status errors, which I don't really know why you want that in there. Uh, Git, that is weird. I mean, that's kind of. I mean, it's weird, but it's kind of cool. You could put your the your the current branch of your Git in the bar instead of having it in your terminal. It's a little weird, but you can do it. Uh, displays the current keyboard layout. The, so, um, the system load, memory, uh, network interface. Um, this is a periodic period period. Well, I can't say that word. Periodically check a. Uh, you know, a website or something using ping, uh, pulse audio, redshift, if you have redshift installed, uh, sensors for te temperatures of your stuff, uh, spacer, obviously, a speed, your a speed test using speed test CLI, which is interesting. So the way this works is you put speed, if you have speed test CLI installed and use this module, every time you clicked it, it would check your internet speed. That's kind of cool. Uh, time, vault, Copy passwords from a password store into a clipboard. I'm not exactly sure why you'd want that, but I mean, okay. Xrander, probably to choose your different, uh, it allows you to enable or disable screens. Again, not sure why you'd want to do that from your bar. A mixer, which is another thing like Pulse Audio. Uh, apt, which would display the apt package update information. That would tell you how to. The, the number of updates, I guess, for apt. Arander, arch update for this is for the AUR and arch. Cool, I probably would use that. Battery, I mean, we're only in the Bs. I'm not gonna go through all of these. I could sit here all day and just go through the, there are just tons. I mean, look, literally scrolling all the way. I mean, I know I'm going too fast, but look at all these modules. It's just insane. Chances are, 
you'll never need to create a module ever <laughs> if you use this. I mean, and these are all just pre-made. Now, I understand. I know that Polybar has a similar number of modules, probably, uh, but they all require download you to download the script and put them in a script folder or put them in a modules folder or something. It has to have some kind of corresponding file that goes along with it in order for it to run. That's the same with pretty much every bar. And I'm sure it's the same with this here, but you don't actually have to download these. These are already available to you. So let, I'm just going to choose one here. Um, let's just choose network traffic. All right, and then we're going to go back to a our, our config file, and just up here, we'll change the battery because I don't actually have a battery here, and just write this mod shift R, and now we have network traffic. That was literally all you needed to do. That's really cool. I mean, shouldn't be that impressive considering that you can do this with other modules, but other bars, but the fact that it was just literally plug and play. I mean, that's just so good. So let's just take one small look at how you would go about developing your own theme. Um, easy creation of custom themes. This is how you do it. So Bumblebee status themes are simply JSON files that describe various attributes, foreground color, background color, etc., etc., of the blocks that make up a status bar. It is possible to specify each attribute for at various levels for a specific state of a specific module for a specific module so basically what that means is that you could change the color based on a certain like if you're using a CPU thing and it goes above a certain percentage you could change the color uh, which is actually an option for one of those modules um, the default values and so on and literally just I mean most of the stuff is just declaring what the uh, colors of the things you want to use and using font awesome for the the, the icons and there, it also allows you to figure out how to use this with Pywall if you wanted to use it with Pywall there's just I mean this is a small project this is a small open source project that it, it's by far not even the closest the the, the most widely used bar for i3 or any window manager and yet it has fantastic documentation this is i mean this spec this i can't even get over i can't even talk about how awesome this this um documentation is i mean it's just it's amazing it uses the same kind of style for this is kind of cute what qtile does it it's actually designed the the documentation at least is designed the same way qtiles is i mean it has a, a frequently asked question i mean it's just it's so good i can't get over it. i'm stuttering it's so good so overall if i had to say anything about this i would say that bumblebee status is my favorite bar to use with i3 it's easy to configure it's easy to download it's easy to uh change your modules input it out you, i mean there's just tons of stuff my only thing that i would say is that i would really wish is that there was more pre-configured themes I mean, really, there's only about 10 or 15 of them, and they're all really kind of the same. So, I mean, and if you don't like the the whole power line aesthetic, you're probably going to create your own theme. But from what I just showed you, it'd be fairly easy to go through and create your own if you wanted to use something different. Um, so, I really, really like Bumblebee status. I'm almost 100% positive I'm going to use it instead of Polybar because... For for the last year and a half or so, when I was mostly a i3 user, I used Polybar, and Polybar is great. But Polybar requires you to do some specific, really launch sh thing, launch sh thing, if you want to go through and do it, use it with multiple monitors. And you have to create bars for multiple monitors. This was 100% automatic. I have it on both monitors. It works with the i3. Uh, you know, uh, workspace indicators, things, right out of the box. No configuration for multiple monitors. It was fantastic. Uh, I, 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 I'm kind of in love with it. It's kind of awesome. And it's kind of making me want to go through and use i3 again for a little while. Kind of. I think I'd probably miss the master stack lay layout of, of uh, DWM. But uh, what I do think is that if I end up using xmonad for a little while i would probably use bumblebee instead of xmobar because my experiences with xmobar 
at least so far. I gotta remember I haven't gone through and actually de- delved into it all that much. The, the, my experiences with X Mobar hasn't have not been that great, just so far. So Bumblebee status is probably going to be an option for me there. Uh, I'll probably I probably also use it with the uh, Spectre WM if I ever get back into that. Um, just because I mean, it's so good. It's I mean, literally there's no configuration of it at all. So, um. That is it for this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Uh, you can support the channel in any number of ways. The easiest way to do so is, subs- is to subscribe. We're trying to get to 1,000 subscribers by the end of the year. We're really, really close. And we might have actually got there by the time this video goes up. We're really close to 200, which is just phenomenal. I, I can't... I mean, 200 subscribers doesn't sound, you know, crazy. But for someone who was, like, at zero in September, <laughs> I mean, really... I think it's awesome. So thanks to everybody who subscribed. If you haven't done so, please subscribe. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff. Patreon.com slash LinuxCast is where you can support us if you want to throw in a few bucks. We do appreciate it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.